Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Trick Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing AMD yet again. We can't seem to leave the bloody company alone. At this rate, they're going to think we're stalking them, I say. This time, however, we're going to be discussing the launch of the Ryzen 5, as well as the SKUs, the pricing, the performance of the chips, and other bits and bobs. And then we're going to focus squarely on Zen 2. That's right, we have news of Zen Successor, which is going to start creeping into the market at some point next year. We'll get into that in just a second. I also want to give a very small update, although I'm probably going to have a vlog in the next couple of days. So today is my birthday, so not huge amounts of stuff is going to come from me, because, well, it's my birthday. And I've also been doing a lot of work today. I've had the new internet installed. I fixed one of the uh, benchmark rigs slash test systems we've had for capture. And now that I've got internet here, I can actually start doing a lot of work, whereas beforehand I need to keep taking files to Amy's house. And it was just basically a living nightmare for content creation purposes. So now we can start getting back to normal. Um, we are going to be reviewing a Kaby Lake system um, which has been sent to us, well, more specifically a motherboard and CPU, so we're going to review that. We've just been sent a new uh, GPU from Zotac, so we're going to review that as well. We've got memory, which I've not been able to review properly because one of our Skylake motherboards decided to explode, which was another thing. So we have a Skylake motherboard coming in a few days' time, and we're also going to be trying the 3000 MHz RAM that we were sent with... Uh, KB Lake, so that's coming. A number of you have messaged me concerning the uh, process, uh, the application, excuse me, called Fred Lasso regarding Ryzen. So I've been testing with that over the past day or two, as well as disabling and enabling CPUs with Ryzen. So I have gotten that, plus a couple of other requests. So I am working on those. But just because the thread, uh, sorry, the rig that was actually capturing the hardware was um, the performance was bollocks, quite frankly, at my place. I haven't been able to do anything, so I had to basically reinstall those SATA cables, format the hard drive because the entire install was corrupted. Uh, it was just it was just basically a thing. But that's all done. So my content is going to resume back to normal over the next day or so. So that's fantastic. But for those of you who are not regular viewers, you've probably managed to sit through that and thinking, what the hell have I gotten myself into? Well, you're going to get yourself into a six-core Ryzen 5 1600X for 249 US dollars on April the 11th, my friend. It's a bit of a weird situation actually with the Ryzen set, with the Ryzen 5s and Ryzen 7s actually with their pricing. Specifically, there's around a $60 price difference between the top of the line SKU down to the 1400. And frankly, I just think it's a bit weird in terms of the pricing. Sorry, I mean a $70 difference, not a $60 difference. But um, when you start looking at the prices, it's like 249 for the 1600X with 12 threads, at 6 cores of course, at 4 gigahertz boost. Well, there's so little difference between it and the price of a 1600 I'm very tempted to say, well, gee, what's the point in the 1600? I would much rather have those guaranteed uh, additional uh, you know, 400 megahertz plus possibly uh, better quality silicon. And then you're going to say, well, okay, um, the 1500X is a pretty good buy because it's only $20 more than the 1400. And there's obviously a 300 megahertz difference. But then you're going to say, well, okay, but you can get an extra, you know, four threads for only $30 more, but then you've got, once again, you can't, you keep going into that uh, thing where you can just spend just a few dollars more and get a processor which is considerably better value for money, or at least higher performance value. Speaking of performance, AMD have reiterated that these TPUs will, of course, outperform Intel, at least in Cinebench. They've told us, giggity, 69% faster than the 7600K in Cinebench, Obviously, game performance and other applications will differ depending on your setup. I do believe, however, that the Ryzen 5s might be the best value out of all of the processors. I say that because when they arrive on 11th of April, you could conceivably get that plus a decent B350 motherboard for a really good price. And it would probably sit at the price point, oh, sorry, the performance levels of like a 5820K in terms of, you know, the value, pro in terms of the level of performance, maybe a little bit higher. But in terms of value proposition, it's really good. Um, and you could couple that with a pretty decent GPU, something like a GTX 1070 or a 1080. And if you're doing streaming, it's pretty much perfect. But also it lends itself to other tasks. For example, if you do a little bit of 3D modeling, if you do a little bit of Blender work, Photoshop, whatever, 
you're good to go. So this processor is probably going to be like the, the bargain CPU. Speaking of bargain, Zen Plus, I don't know actually why I said bargain, that didn't really make much sense considering the, the lead-in, but we are going to however focus on Pinnacle Ridge as well as Zen 2. So just so we're all aware, currently of course Zen is being released on the AM4 platform. AM4 is going to be supported for some time, including Zen 2 and Zen 3. Concurrently, AMD are working on both CPUs, that would be Zen 2 as well as Zen 3 architectures, but we now have some information concerning Zen 2. We don't know, however, what other shinies AMD will release on the AM4 platform. So, for example, let's say you currently have an X370 board, all right? Well, in, let's say, 2018, 2019, when PCIe 4 probably becomes normal, is that going to convince you to upgrade your board? Therefore, AM4 is not really that important of a platform. It's just a platform. Well, maybe. It depends, I guess, on what you're going to be utilizing your system for. Regardless of all of that, we don't know everything about Zen 2. What we do know is it's likely going to have some IPC gains, judging entirely from what AMD have told us um, in the past, that they don't just want clock speed boosts. They're obviously taking a dig at Intel and KB Lake there. And instead, they want to basically reinvigorate the architecture each release. We can also make the assumption that higher clock speeds are going to be a thing. So presumably, that would mean the equivalent of like, I don't know what the hell it's going to be called. I mean, I'm going to assume it would be like the Ryzen 7 2800X. That would make sense. I'm guessing. I don't know. You tell me. But let's assume that that's true. That would mean the 2800X would probably feature clock speeds of like 4.3 to 4.5 gigahertz. Let's say 10% 4.4. And AMD are also hoping, to, hoping, excuse me, to consolidate their APU lineup across both mobile platforms as well as desktop. So currently, there is Raven Ridge, which is going to be launching this year. It supports four Zen cores on an, F an FP5 BGA package, which is mobile orientated. And they're also going to launch an APU for the desktop, which is Bristol Ridge. Um, however, in 2018, only Raven Ridge will be present in its portfolio, and that will be for both mobile and desktop platforms. Pinnacle Ridge, however, is going to be on Zen 2 architecture, and it does confirm that we're also going to see Zen 2 with up to 8 cores. This does mean that, at least in theory, we're not going to see like, uh, I don't know, like a 12 core Zen CPU, at least for this particular CPU lineup for Pinnacle Ridge. Who knows, maybe in like a month later, they might change their mind. Maybe they will release more processors. Maybe they are still working on this. Maybe they've not made a decision. We just don't know. However, AMD's lineup is pretty solid at the moment. Uh, presumably, we're going to see quite the increase in various processors um, from both AMD and Intel because they're going to be ramping things up. We also know that AMD are going to be hosting a technology summit. I think it's tomorrow, if memory serves. And we can probably expect some Vega news. Whether we will see anything about that, well, we just don't know huge amounts. AMD will also be showing off more stuff about the Ryzen processor. I don't exactly know what. I'm going to assume they're probably going to wax lyrically about the performance of Ryzen 5 and possibly give us a little more information regarding the research and development of Vega. I'm hoping for more information regarding the performance of the chips, but they seem really tight-lipped about that, exactly how the SKU is going to work. We might also, if we're really lucky, get some insight into what the hell the RX 500 series is. We talked about that just yesterday. It appears, and obviously appearances can be deceiving, but it appears from the rumors to essentially be Polaris, but with higher clock speeds. So for example, the, five, the RX 580 is gonna have about 100 megahertz on top of the turbo clocks, which is not too, or rather boost clocks, which is not too bad, especially if you've not bought a Polaris 10, GPU. So, for example, let's say you haven't bought an RX 480, but you're in the market for a, pr a GPU around that price, then the RX 5 series becomes a lot tastier. But if you've already got a 480, you're going to be like, eh, probably not that interested in upgrading. In which case, really, you're left with either Vega or the possibility of a GTX 1070 or possibly a Pascal refresh. But we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, he says, with some trepidation in his voice. I know it's been a bit of a, an odd 
couple of days because of the video issues we've had with production, but they sh those excuse me shall be resolved. Um, I'm going to go edit this video, and then the rest of my day is going to be doing a little bit of work and actually enjoying the fact I've got internet. So that's nice. I'm not joking when I say the internet here has been shocking. And one of the reasons behind that, um, from what the engineer told me, is that basically the line was damaged internally in the ground. So whenever there was like, you know, water, and considering it's currently March here in the UK, um, water is kind of a regular occurrence, uh, basically it went into the line and basically knocked out the internet for the entire area. Uh, well, at least my, you know, flat. So it was just... It was just a nightmare. So they've installed a new line, which is exclusive to me now. So hopefully that won't be an issue. But I was, it basically went between three states. State one, it was downloading at a decent speed, not fast, but you know, a couple hundred kilobytes a second. I was like, okay, this isn't great, but at least I can work. Then it went to like two kilobytes a second, which is what I consider to be takes the piss stage. And then stage three is just, it didn't work. So yeah, and it was like, 50% of, you know, not working at all, 25% of it downloaded at 2 or 3 kilobytes a second, and the rest of the time it was like, you know, it worked okay. So it was like a gamble, it was like, you know, a circus of values internet, if you will. Anyway, um, I'm gonna run off now, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon, take care of yourselves, bye for now. And yes, I'm struggling to remember which screen's which, because I've got a new setup and it's really weirding me out, bye for now.